Well, welcome back. This is Dee Sanford, and this is the Christian Business Forum, the television show for people who do business by the book. Don't touch that dial because our favorite guest is here, Dr. J.L. Hutchinson, President and CEO of the Dr. Hutch International. Dr. Hutch International does so many different things, starting with a radio program, and tonight we're going to be talking about international networking. Now, Dr. Hutch has been with us many times, and we've learned so much from him, but we're going to talk about something absolutely brand new, and we have only begun to scratch the surface of what Dr. Hutch is able to share with us. Good evening, Dr. Hutch. Welcome back. Good evening. Thank Great you. Great to be back uh, on the show. Thank well, you. Stephanie. So good to have you back on, too, because we never finished learning from you, such a young man and yet so knowledgeable. Now, we were talking earlier that we've had these, what, what did you do, the seven? I did the seven steps to setting your goal, mm -hmm. and I came on and did a estate planning, created a lifestyle, and then I did a part two series of estate planning, talking about uh, dynasty planning. Yes, and those have been such interesting shows, and I know some of the people haven't heard them yet, but that, stay tuned on Wednesday nights at 7.30, and you'll be able to pick up on those as well. Well, Dr. Hutch, when we talked about the show tonight, you said you wanted to talk about the area of international networking. What is that from your perspective? Well, my perspective is that as far as our, uh, we're in a global society today, and that being able to do business all over the world is one of the things that we can do from uh, via computer as far as internet and also uh, basically through networking through different people especially San Diego County has a lot of international people here and we can network with other people in other different countries well that sure is the truth I've done that myself on the internet and I've been able to open up the world really by without any faxes or anything just by internet now what is your vision of how international networking is going to work for you and and for others well as far as uh, my uh, foremost my business is real estate investing with my company Tricon Worldwide Signature and we uh, teach people how to become real estate investors and we have a training facility that we have here but with Dr. Hutch International is taking it to another level where we're actually going to other countries helping them to de develop businesses and give them opportunities that they could do business not just over in their country but also do business here in the United States too well that is really exciting because many people in other countries would love to know more about how we do business. How, how are you going to pull all of that off? Well, uh, God has opened up a number of doors. Well, praise uh, God. And those doors that's being opened, God usually always return you back to your first love. And uh, being an international businessman is my first love. I used to be in the international business uh, dealing with uh, different products and different things uh, of that nature. But what he has me doing now is more like a uh, thing of training and and also like a philanthropist I'm turning into like a philanthropist right now that's one of the things that I'm uh, uh, it's new for me well that's wonderful and your money can go a long way when you go into another country where people have such great need and a little bit of money goes a lot farther than it does over here. Now, you were talking about training. What areas would you like to train people in? Well, uh, sometimes you always say you never want to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. In some countries, you can go into like Ghana. They already have training that they provide. But the thing is that the people don't have the money. So what I would do is mm -hmm. I'm in the process of setting up scholarships and sponsorships in the name of different individuals that would donate money. Mm -hmm. With uh, my company uh, using my name as a scholarship, and setting up a training mm -hmm. facility. And what kind of training would they offer over there that you're primarily interested in? Well, they have training for nurses. They have training mm -hmm. for uh, different things as far as, as carpenters and mm -hmm. also as uh, business jitneymen, as far as dri uh, driving back and forth, as far as, as taxis, stuff like that. So uh, setting people up to do business, also as call centers, too. Yes. Because in India they have call centers, but in Africa they don't. No, they don't, and there's a lot of people who have telephones. Primarily when I was over there, too, there were a lot of cell phones. But I'm really interested in this whole area of training because there are a lot of people who would not be able to get training if it were not for a scholarship. Uh, a lot of people have to pay to go to school, and in fact, when Oprah set up her school, a lot of the young women were so happy to be able to go to a school that nice. 
So um, people who come from the United States are really in a position to help people in Africa and other countries to be able to get the education that they wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah, and I'm looking at uh, training people via DVD, uh, oh. which what I use right now with mm -hmm. my clients, and that is a way that people have been training people all over the world. So that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing that, as far as uh, be basically being able to repeat a number of different people more than I could do physically. So that's one of the uh, venues that I'm using. Well, you know, Dr. Hutch, as you were speaking too, there are a lot of people who still think everybody in Africa is in a hut sitting in the dirt with flies on them. And you and I know that that is not the truth. No. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, there's a lot of technology over there. And when I was there uh, some years ago, in fact, back in 2011 and, and even before, uh, we had Internet access then over there. Yeah, we, we pretty much have had. We set up a cyber lab. One of the first cyber labs was set up in Johannesburg, oh. and that was in 1998. And okay. that was through uh, Qualcomm and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Highland Park uh, Church. They actually, uh, in uh, Mighty Man, it was an organization that I belonged to, and we set up a cyber lab over there. So people over there do have the technology. And one of the things is just the wages and the jobs are, uh, are scarce. Okay. And even though they don't have a laptop or something like that there are internet cafes mm -hmm. that they can go to and schools and and other places that they do have internet access yeah because we're in competition uh throughout the world everywhere you go we are in competition a lot of our jobs that was here in the united states are now overseas and yes, those jobs are. are being overseas i was just reading today in Botswana, there is uh the minimum wage is uh, ridiculously low and uh, people are complaining because of but if you give people an opportunity and give them some skills then what happens you create entrepreneurs entrepreneurs mm -hmm. need to be created throughout the world that would help strengthen the economy look at where we are today in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mostly all the jobs that we have is by entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Without entrepreneurs, how would this society be able to function? Well, there's a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs over there, but they're not doing things that involve technology. And they're not uh, necessarily skilled in a lot of different areas. Uh, as in any country, there are people who sell what they grow on their farm, and they might be selling what they make or baskets or whatever. But now we're talking about training people for more professional positions. And there are a lot of professionals in Africa, but certainly it does not match the number of people or the need. Uh, one of the reasons I chose Africa is my first love. I mm -hmm. used to be an activist in regards to apartheid when I was younger. Mm -hmm. and But uh, also, Africa has all the resources. Mm -hmm. As far as all the resources, as far as gold, diamond, pearl, everything that you would actually need. Uh, but the people don't know how to use those things. It is really of no value to them because they don't know how to trade. And what you want to do is you want to be able to equip those individuals and educate them with the knowledge because they already have the resources mm -hmm. and being able to take those raw materials and being able to make something where they can actually create a living and a lot of their family. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and uh, those of us in the United States are the few in the world who don't realize how many resources are really in Africa. And that's why Africa was colonized by the English and the Dutch and the, the French and so many other uh, nations that went into Africa and took a lot of their resources out and began to use them in different ways. And the people weren't able to participate other than you know, the, the lowest of, of laborers. Yeah, and people go over to Africa and they take advantage of those opportunities. Yes, they have. Because they have the knowledge. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I want to do is actually make a connection between the African-American that's here mm -hmm. and the African that is there, and also the African that is here in the United States, and create a network, a relationship, because uh, most of the time we find ourselves in situations where we don't understand each other. Mm -hmm. But we have been here for so long and we know how to do things. We know the process, we know the procedure, and we can go over there and help equip them to give them the process and the procedure to be able to make monetary compensation, not just for themselves, but for their family and be able to teach other people. Well, they're ready, too. They're ready. When I went yeah. over and spoke at a conference for businesswomen in 2000, uh, 2001, really before 9-11, uh, I, I spoke at several conferences to professional people, professional women, mm -hmm. and administrators. that's what the administrative oh. uh, secretaries day. I I spoke for one of those events, and there are people that were so happy to have someone to come from a different country, especially from the United States. And people really are very dependent upon the United States and, vi mm -hmm. and view the United States as a, a, a tremendous player in the world scene, as as we are. But now here's the opportunity, Dr. Hutchinson, as you were saying, 
for us as African Americans to return mm -hmm. yeah. and to be able to help our people. How do you see all of that coming together? Well, how I see it coming together, first of all, you have to have a mutual ground. Mm -hmm. You have to have established some type of relationship because most of the time our relationship is scarce because we always feel like we're, one is trying to take for the, from the other. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. What we need to do is have a association here in the mm -hmm. United States because most of the Africans that come from different countries, Sudan, people that come from uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, they all have one thing in common. They network with each other. Yes. They know exactly where the other individual is as mm -hmm. far as throughout the United States. If they all move to Nebraska, they know that how many people is in Nebraska. They keep a tight network. And that's one of the things. And one of the issues that, uh, uh, especially the Sudanese, I had a meeting with them, and one of their problems is, here in the United States, they don't have a way of taking care of the elders that are here. Oh, and really? And most of them are shut in, mm -hmm. and they don't have any activities going on. So they stay in the home. So us as African Americans, we have already established that for our elderly, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can plug them in, not just because they're Africans, but plug them in because they're people. That's right. And that's, that's what right. we need to see each other mm -hmm. as people. Well, you know, it's interesting that you should uh, mention that they already have such a network going. Do they call it a network or do they call it something else? Just it's staying connected. It's actually just a common, it's common knowledge mm -hmm. of them having a relationship with each and every one. And that's one of the things that African Americans, we don't have. Mm -hmm. We don't have that common knowledge of each other. Mm -hmm. We uh, tend to feel that the other person is trying to take from them and then we you know, just normally we usually don't say hi at all but those guys they network and we can learn some things from them mm -hmm. and if we learn those things we could be able to network with people here in the United States people in Georgia mm -hmm. as far as people in Los Angeles we have a strong connection mm -hmm. and know what's going on and when I go to your uh, different events I notice that it's a lot of African American women that have businesses oh I'll tell you over we're going into our 10th year mm -hmm. and and um, it, it never fails to amaze me how many professionals there are in San Diego. But you mentioned something a few minutes ago, too. And, and one of the things that I learned in a, a conversation, I was at a networking event in Washington, D.C., at the Black Caucus, as a matter of fact, several years ago. And I had the opportunity to speak with a Nigerian gentleman. And he told me something I didn't know, Dr. Hutch. He says that in Nigeria, they run all of these terrible movies about African Americans in the United States until when, when he got ready to come over here, his people told him to stay away from us. Oh. And then over here, they're showing us everybody sitting in the dirt with flies on them. So they're basically telling us to stay away from them. So they're, in effect, doing exactly what Willie Lynch that turn, turn them against one another to keep us from coming together and, and experiencing the kind of power that we could have by exchanging uh, information and skills and all those things that you're talking about. And as far as in that. one of the things I learned from you and uh, being around you is uh, communication. Mm -hmm. Networking is through communication and how you keep in contact with all the people that you are associated with and also having an image and a reputation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like that. And it shows me that if she can do it, what about me? Oh, you, you've done it. You've done it. It's not easy. But I, I was just thinking with that newsletter, what if we could get a newsletter going over there? That would be a tremendous thing because some continuous education, continuous news, continuous skills, all those different things that we're doing here through the Internet, we could actually pass that right along. Yeah, and a lot of people mm -hmm. say, well, we, you, know, you can't, they don't speak the language. Well, the average African speaks about six to seven different mm -hmm. languages. So they do speak English. They mm -hmm. speak Arabic. They speak a number of different languages, speak French. Mm -hmm. So there is a connection. So uh, some of those languages that we can learn, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 